Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Gone. Yeah. I'm out of tea, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I will have a cappuccino. Yeah, yeah. thanks good. a lot. Yeah. So, okay. Mm -hmm. We obviously grew up together. Yeah. So I've been to your trophy <laughs> room, your very large trophy yeah. room. And uh, despite it being very large, it's already spilling over with silverware, mm. with medals and belts and trophies of all kinds. Yeah. Mm. And not just any trophies, well, we're talking about Olympic gold medals, we're talking about mm. uh, five world, mm. uh, world gold medals, countless European mm. medals. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about every professional belt <laughs> you can imagine. Yeah. All in there. In all of that, in all of those achievements, is your one that stands out for you. Um, well, thanks for that. It's always nice to get a reminder of all of the, the <laughs> files. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's hard to pin down just one, especially since um, every victory has its own story mm. and it had its own, uh, own hurdles to overcome. Mm. Um, I think it is hard to look past the, the Olympic gold medal just mm. you know, because I fought so hard to get mm. women's boxing into the, the mm. Olympics. And mm. I've been the pound for pound and uh, number one female amateur boxer for so long. I think I would have felt cruel to fall at the final hurdle. Mm. Um, I think you can see that burden in my face as I waited for the decision in the final. Mm. Um, I think the uh, initial reaction was just a release of 10 years of fighting outside the, the ring for this dream. And yeah. obviously that relief gave way to joy. Mm. Uh, but if, if I'm being completely honest, um, uh, the initial reaction was just, uh, the, the initial emotion was just a pure relief. Mm. Mm. For um, us as well, by the way. Yeah, I mean, that, exactly. That was one of the <clears throat> tensest moments in my life. Yeah, it was agonizing. The <laughs> yeah. The time from the end of that, the mm -hmm. final bell to the decision yeah. on that Olympic final felt like a lifetime. Oh, it was awful. Um, but obviously when the decision was announced, it was, it was as pure relief, pure joy, and obviously gratitude as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but a very, very close second, maybe even equal first was probably becoming the Undisputed World mm. uh, Professional Champion. Mm. It's the, the pinnacle of, of professional boxing. and mm. Very different. Yeah, very, very different. Very different. Yeah. The, the journey was very different mm. and the sacrifice were more personal. Mm. And for the first time since starting boxing, I felt like I was climbing up a huge mountain from mm. the very bottom. Mm. Um, and I think it took um, a lot of inner strength to come through the disappointment of losing it in the Rio Olympics and mm. just the personal, um, uh, just the chaotic personal circumstances around that loss as well. Mm. Um, but I did uh, pull, it, pull myself back up, obviously with a huge assist from God. And uh, I think we managed to pull uh, women's professional boxing up to a certain extent too. And I'm mm. very, very proud of that. I mean, with all, all of those wins, right, that's a lot of achievements, right? I mean, if you if you quit today, you'd, you'd still be, mm. you know, one of the most successful sports people of all time. But you're still going, you're still hungry. So I guess what I'm interested in is, is like, what is success for you? How do you define it? You know, I've grown up with you, so I, I kind of know it's not money. I know that doesn't really drive you. So, so what is it? What is success for you? Yeah, I mean, that's a tough one. I think um, it would be disingenuous for me to say that I didn't love winning titles. Mm. I, I really love winning titles. I want to be the best. Mm. Um, I'd love to be able to sit here and look at you in the eye and say, you know, success for me is kindness or helping others. Yeah, right, um, yeah. But I know that's obviously great, but... Um, but I do know that whatever success I have, um, it has no ultimate meaning if, if it is disconnected from what I think is God's plan for my life. Mm. And um, sometimes I, I, it's easy, that perspective is easy for me. Other times I have to remind myself that mm. gold medals and titles won't last. Mm. Um, but how I walk out this journey could have a, um, a lasting impact. Mm. And um, I often ask myself, you know, whose kingdom are you building? Mm. Uh, God's are, are my own. Mm. And that question is just a great way to refocus my heart's attention on what actually matters and what's uh, ultimately meaningful. Mm. Um, and how many times we see like famous actors or musicians you know, reach the highest of heights and mm. yeah, they're feeling so unsatisfied or they're in complete despair. Mm. And yeah. how, how can you call that success? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, if you look at the life of Jesus and you ask yourself, was Jesus successful? Um, you know, he didn't have any wealth. Mm. He wasn't universally popular. Mm. Um, his day job was carpentry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, he was immensely influential. And mm. I guess that's the model for success. Um, mm. Influence in the world around you by self-sacrifice. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think that that will obviously look different for, for every single person. Mm. Um, it will, of course, um, involve, I think, your gifts and talents. I, I don't bury my desire to win. I love to win. But mm. I, I love that, that God puts this in me. He, mm. he puts this gift in me. And 
I don't uh, honor him by bearing that gift. I honor him by um, putting it on display and use mm. my gift to influence the world around me. So yeah, I mean, uh, I think you know, obviously titles and uh, and gold medals are important to me, but but only because I think God has put this gift in me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, and uh, you know, without that that context, there's no bigger purpose or meaning uh, to, yeah. to those things. You know, a, a belt is just a belt without God. Yeah. A gold medal is just a gold medal without God. But yeah. with God. Um, it represents a victory that we walk together mm-hmm. and um, it is a shared experience in our friendship and yeah, yeah. we'll look back on that with eternal joy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's great, a great picture. Yeah, so, so your, your career then, your boxing career and your, um, your Christian faith, which you're always very open about, they're very much integrated for you then. Yeah. It's not like, it's not a segregation for you. Yeah. It's not like you do your boxing career and then, mm-hmm. you know, church is something you do on a Sunday. They yeah. seem to be very much integrated for you. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's impossible to separate it, isn't it? Um, mm. you know, Christianity is not um, a 30 minute service on Christmas Eve or, or right. Easter. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's every part of our lives. And that's very true for me because mm. you know, I approach every training session, every fight, every up and down, knowing that God is in and knowing that God matters, mm. and knowing that, he, uh, that I matter to Him mm. um, more so. And um, yeah, so, uh, you know, prayer, meditating on the Bible, reading scripture, like, form an essential part of my preparation. Mm. And, um... You, you mean form an essential part of your actual boxing preparation? My actual bo- boxing preparation. Yeah. This is not a form of superstition. Everyone yeah. knows that Sam 18 is my Sam. Yeah. This is the Sam that I wear. Um, on my boxing gear. And yeah. um, this, the, my first read that Sam as a 17 year old. Yeah, yeah. Um, in, in one of my European championships that you were actually there at. Yeah, that's, right. yeah, yeah. that's the first time I actually read that Sam. And, uh, as I was reading it, the, the tears were flowing down my face. So yeah. I just felt like God was speaking to me directly. And yeah. that just became, um, um, my mantra, I guess, before yeah. every single fire I read that, that Sam. And that, that's, uh, just essential to me as, uh, as far and yeah. as, um, as running a road runs or mm. uh, a wrap in my hands. Mm. So yeah, Christianity by definition um, involves a whole person. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, couldn't agree more. Yeah. I mean, it always strikes me in kind of, I guess, in drawing that analogy between uh, boxing and Christianity, mm. right? There's a, there's a lot of analogies there, even in the biblical writings, you yeah. know, Paul, for example, the apostle Paul draws a few analogies between athletes and <laughs> Uh, walking out the Christian mm. life, even mentions shadow boxing at yeah, one point. Yeah. Um, it, it always struck me that one of the virtues that's really essential to mm. walking out a good Christian life is courage. Mm. And that same virtue is really essential to be a good boxer. Yeah. Uh, how, how, how have you seen those two things play out in your, yeah, in your life, both I as mean, a Christian and as a boxer? Yeah, courage is absolutely essential, isn't it? In both your faith and, and uh, in my career as a boxer. Um, I think C.S. Lewis actually has a great quote. Uh, what is that about? Courage is a virtue, not, not simply a virtue. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's not a virtue. It's the uh, it's the form of every virtue at its testing point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, cool. it's a brilliant quote because that, that rings true, very, very true for me. Um, it takes immense courage to live out, live out every other virtue, especially mm. in, in a season of testing. Mm. Um, it takes courage to, to live with integrity. Mm. Um, it takes courage to... Um, to be faithful in difficult seasons mm. it takes courage to, to love sacrificially mm. um and in my career it doesn't just take courage um on fight night when i'm when, when i'm stepping in a fight night but it takes courage to, to show up day in day out mm. to push my body to that point that, that hurts mm. it takes courage to live out this dream and um, you know what people see in this dream is, is me dancing under the bright lights mm. hopefully with my, with my hands being raised at the mm. end of it but uh, this dream costs, it is sacrifice. I have to sacrifice an awful lot. I have to sacrifice um, the ordinary pleasures of life, mm. uh, all for the joy of something bigger. Mm. And it's the same with our faith. It, it takes courage to, to live it out day by day. Mm. Um, I think it's very tempting to uh, uh, to choose what's what's easy and convenient moment by moment, mm. but um, it takes immense courage. Mm. Uh, to to uh, suspend what is convenient and then to yeah. choose what is meaningful. Absolutely. And um, um yeah that's that's so good i mean I, I think this last season as a pro boxer i think that has been more true for you than any other season because like you, you mentioned earlier it's the first the first time i guess since you've started boxing where you felt like you were starting at the bottom of the yeah. mountain and the sacrifices involved were things like leaving ireland and yeah. going to set up 
home on your own, mm -hmm. not knowing anybody in the snowy suburbs of Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that really did cost a lot. I mean, it was hard for family relationships. Yeah, was, yeah, but definitely yeah. never in a million years that I think I, I, I'd be able to, to move away from family because I was a real home bird. Yeah, yeah. I love being surrounded by family. Yeah. And we are, and we're such a tight and a close yeah. family. So yeah, right. it's it's always really tough for the whole family, even since even saying our, our goodbyes when I'm going back for a few yeah. a few more months uh, for training camp. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you see, could they, I mean, it's, it is, like I said, it takes uh, so much courage uh, to, to, live, to live our fate as well mm -hmm. as, as, as in our career. And um, because you know that you might not only, you might not reap, reap the reward until the future or yeah. maybe not in this lifetime at all. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you see that courage in the life of Jesus, for example, when he's, uh, um, just before he was headed into, into Jerusalem mm. uh, for his persecution. And mm. um, we read in the Gospels that, um, he was uh, like just the way that he just he was uh, struggling with the weight of what he what he knew mm -hmm. he was about to face, and mm -hmm. we read that he was on his knees, mm -hmm. um, sweating blood, yeah. full of anguish. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's my favorite scene in all, in all of the gospels. Yeah. By the way, that's my favorite scene. I that actually, moment in the garden. I, yeah, I actually get really emotional every time yeah. I actually read that scripture. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, even yeah. to this day, it's like a, it's it, it's, hard, it, it's it's hard. It's yeah. it's so human of him to, to feel that anguish. Yeah. Um, but he, he prayed the, uh, the most courageous prayer anybody could pray. And uh, not my will, Father, but yours be the one. Yeah. I said, <laughs> yeah. it's crazy. I feel it. I'm feeling it yeah, feel yeah. as you're talking. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible because that's, yeah. that's the courage I want. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that is incredible. And that, that courage obviously took him to the cross. Mm. And then, um, so, so really and, yeah, I mean, any courage that we, that we have is insignificant compared to his. Mm. But yeah, any courage that we have is because of his courage. Yeah. And just finally, on that note, uh, what would you say, in particular to young people, but to people more generally, mm -hmm. who are trying to make their way through the modern world mm -hmm. with uh, all of its social media craziness, yeah. all of its uh, distorted meaning of success? We've been talking mm -hmm. about success a lot here and what it means to you. And, and I guess the other side of that is that kind of the modern cultural idea yeah. of success, uh, which is, you know, defined by social media <laughs> likes. It's defined by those kinds yeah. of... Uh, more superficial mm. things, and then I worry. I worry as well about kind of like modern relationship, yeah. being in the virtual world, being cheap, being mm. transactional. Like, what would your what's Katie Taylor's tips <laughs> to the young person trying to make their way through the modern world? Yeah, um, I, I guess there there would be a few things I would say. Um, firstly, I, I would tell them to to um, pursue truth and meaning over uh, cheap fame or material things. Mm. Um, I think if you know that you're pursuing something meaningful, then you're already successful. Mm. And um, um, then that might not even be in your day job. That could mm. be that you find it the deepest truth or meaning, say, in parenting or, yeah. or helping others. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'd say pursue truth or meaning. Um, and I, I get the temptation to, to pursue, like, chief fame or, or a quick fortune. But if you can attain it quickly and easy, you, you can also lose it just as quickly mm. as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Secondly, I would say um, your happiness does not depend on things that can be easily lost, yeah. uh, like fame, money, uh, your reputation. Th mm. These things are easily lost. And mm. if you um, build your life on these things, um, you could be left in, in complete despair if they're, if they're taken from you. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's important for, yeah. for today. That's an important lesson. Cause I, I, you can see the temptation though, right? Yeah, yeah it definitely. You know, the fast it. cars, a nice life. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and you can see that people are building their idea of success on these things, building their the foundations for their happiness and for their meaning in their life on these things. Exactly. And it can disappear like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great one. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? Um, yeah, I think the uh, relationships are, are not transactional. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The number of followers or the number of likes you have um, does not mean that you have healthy relationships. Mm. I would say to find a, a small uh, pocket of friends, a small group of friends who mm. who walk this life out with you, the mm. ups and downs of life, mm. who are there to, to genuinely support you, to mm. love you, and uh, and to just have your back, really. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm talking about real friends, not, not virtual ones. Yeah, yeah. You, you've been very good at that, in fairness. Like, uh, you, yeah. know, you have a very close circle of friends. Your world is quite small, in fact, right? Very, very small. And my friends are, are from here have come from my, my early age. So yeah. I've, I've, had, I've had a small pocket of friends here. I've got a great group of friends in America as well. Mm. Uh, that I've developed over the last, over the last five years. And mm. you're right, my, my world is very, very small. Mm. but. 
Um, but I love it as well. And, yeah. and these these friends genuinely do have my back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're there to support me, to love me, to to be with me in, in the ups and downs of life. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, yeah, it's yeah. Really, really I'd important. say your personal world is small. Of course, your professional world is huge. It's, <laughs> <Yeah>. it's global. <laughs> Just to clarify. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're insulting me here yeah. a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think lastly, and most importantly, I'll tell the people to pray often. Mm. And it's the most important um, a conversation you can have each day. And uh, we're not focused, uh, we're not designed to be focused uh, on ourselves mm. constantly. And prayer actually takes the focus away from us and directs us to the, to the ultimate meaning. Mm. And um, I'd say if you, haven't tr uh, have you ha if you haven't gotten into the habit of it, just try it and watch how your burden feels lighter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. All cheers to that. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs>